you the time to do so. Your life and your body literally depends on it. We are seeing an upstick of black women running and winning their respective campaigns, i.e. Boston, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's because black women show up and do the job asked of us. So as a disclaimer, our guest for today was invited by our show host and did not pay for this airtime. It gives us great pleasure to welcome Candace Corals to our show today. Candace is a native of St. Louis, Missouri. She received her bachelor's degree in personal psychology from Missouri Western State University and therefore thereafter, excuse me, completed a master's degree in managerial leadership with an emphasis in human resources management from Webster University. Candace's professional career spans over a decade in human resources in the private and public sector with distinguished consulting firm Deloitte, coupled with experience in municipal government at the city of Grand Prairie in Texas. She currently is the organizing director for the Texas Working Families Party. Outside of work, Candace is involved in a variety of community organizations, such as the Alliance for Greater Works, National Urban League, and the League of Women Voters. She is a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. For her civic and corporate contributions, she was named the 2014 Dallas Business Journal's 40 Under 40 Distinction, which recognizes the top and up in commerce in DFW area. Candace enjoys reading, volunteering, and traveling with her husband and enjoying her newest role as a mom. She is also the city councilwoman play six for DeSoto, Texas, and is up for re-election. Welcome, Candace. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Council Rep ran for mayor. So oh. who represented me, she ran for mayor, which left an open seat. Okay. So had a couple weeks to decide, okay, I jump in now or I jump in uh, six years from now when the other guy turns out. We have mm. to your terms. So then I was like, okay. But my question was, are young people even running for office or are young people not getting elected at all? Because mm. they don't want to see young people in leadership or we're not even putting our name in the hat. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. And um, if they want me, Lord, they want me. If they don't want me, then they won't have me. And then that'll be my experience. <laughs> so... I got in, I was, of course, I was in a bunch of programs before then, but I never thought I'd be a candidate. I was a bunch of programs that teach you how to run for office. Like I was in um, the Project Lift with Local Investment in the Future of Texas. Um, that's a, a program by the Texas Democratic Party where I was okay. going to Austin once a month to learn how to run for office. Like to talk to knock doors and data and canvassing and all this good stuff. And I was in the White House Project where they teach women how to run for office. All these things I've done years previous, but I never thought, oh, not me. I'm going to be a campaign manager. So why were you even doing it right. then? I thought I'd be question. a campaign manager. For oh. Someone. I never thought. Look at us. <laughs> we're like, ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So someone needs to be ready to get, um, yeah. you know, people elected that represent you. So I was like, oh, I'll go to all these things. And then you go to so many, in, like most women, over-preparing. Like men go to one event and they are like, I'm going to run for Congress. Women are like, no, I need to think about it. I need to wait till I'm 10 years. My kids 10. I need to run for city council. Then I can run for mayor. And then I work for state rep. Then I can run for Congress. Then I can. Men don't think like that. Men go to one meeting and they can like, I want to run for Congress. I think I'm going to be president one day. So just think of that span of how we limit ourselves. Mm hmm. It's things like that where we talk ourselves out of it. So anyway, I ran um, first time candidate, knocked on 3,000 doors, and I'm um, the one with 66% of the vote. It's the first time candidate. So Wow. That's awesome. Back. Awesome. That and um, awesome. I was reelected in May of this year unopposed. Right. So wow. I'm up in 2021. So I don't have to do any campaigning for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Till 2021. But aren't some of these, like, you know, programs that you went through, aren't they during work hours? So, um, the, a lot of the programs are um, for people after hours and on weekends. Oh, okay. So sacrifice a little bit. So, the program that I went to, that I drove to Austin for, it was all day Saturday okay. for six months. So, um, yeah, I had to drive to Austin from Dallas uh, one time a month for six months, but I felt it was worth it. Yeah, and I know the type. You know, I I know the way that I learn, and it's very classroom style. I need you to have modules. I need to know how it's gonna. You know, I need to know what we're gonna learn three weeks from now. I need to know. I need to re refer to my notes later. I need to ask a ton of questions. 
um, that's what that provided me real structure. And a lot of times when you get into races, um, you know, it's all over the place. Campaigns are like just life mm -hmm. on steroids times 10 warp speed. So most people can't handle the fact that campaign life is, it's, is how your regular life is times 10. So you got to roll with it. So most of you would drop out simply for that. It's, it's a lot to keep up with, but it's for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And then you're done. Then you get to the hard part, which is slow, which is governing. And mm -hmm. that's forever. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. ancient and slow. It's, you know, nothing at the pace of a campaign. So I see a lot of women, that, that's what the hangup is. It's once you decide you get in and you, you file, um, it's go time. And that's usually where I can see the people who are going to make it and the ones who, oh, I just want to see if I could get it. Like, no, we don't put our name on the hat to see mm -hmm. if we can get it. We put our name on the hat so we can win true mm -hmm. and get these titles and get these things done so um i yeah we'll talk about encouraging other women to get in and, and get involved but um yeah it's the stamina yes yeah. yes <laughs> yes so let's talk on the flip side of that so you mentioned that how men will go to one meeting and just say hey i'm I am more than qualified, right? But you also need to have a great support system mm -hmm. in order to file, be successful, go knocking on 3,000 doors. So talk to me about your family dynamics while you were in this process of Yeah, the so in May 2016, um, at the, so I had Avery in April, I mean, August 2014, so... Um, she was 18 months, and um, I had my toddler in a stroller when I was doing half of this campaigning. And my husband is very supportive. Um, and, you know, it's, it's while it's great to have a kid and be on the campaign trail, there are real-life implications of having a kid that my colleagues that are retired don't have, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about, um, you know, just, hey, there's a candidate for him at 6 o'clock on Thursday. Okay, they can just show up. And I'm like coordinating in my head already. Okay, I got to pick her up by 3.30. If I get her over there in time, then they can take her home and then get her something to eat. And then she can be in bed by 8. Then I can come back after. They don't have to do all that. Yeah. Right. I have to think about that. So that's that extra energy that nobody ever accounts for except for moms. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband, he gets it. Um, he is very supportive. He picks up the slack he knows when you know hey tuesday are council meetings first and third tuesdays right now so don't plan anything on that day and those dates are set for years right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. let's 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 work around that um and my mom is here now so she lives in texas okay. so she's a part of the unit she gets it um when we were campaigning you know you don't run alone uh, the family's running. Mm -hmm. All of y'all are campaigning. Everybody's running for office. I know. I've seen Avery in the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she was, you know, 18 months at the time. So yeah. now she's like, you know, she gets it. And she used to go into me. He's like, Mom, like, are you going to council me? she roll say. up in council like, <laughs> like Blue Ivy? <laughs> Like, listen, I need your vote, council member. I'm not, Today she I'm was not like, new to this. I'm not okay. new to this. No, she's like, um, can I have my iPad? <laughs> <laughs> I have her iPad, charge it up, and I, you know, all the prep that you have to do to yeah. get ready for your day. Yeah. Um, yeah, iPad charge. She's like, how many meetings are we going to council meeting? Because that's boring. So oh. now she gets that. <laughs> But you get it, though. As you mentioned, being a mom, you have to take into account all of the other things. So, And you also talked about it briefly in the introduction as to why, you know, how women are, what I'll say, hyper analytical about running mm -hmm. and filing and things like that. So why are black women or moms not more active in politics? Um, so I think there is some... Uh one, I think is it is ex internal and external. So internally, we are talking ourselves into it and talking ourselves out all probably in mm. the same three hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can do this, you know, and I really can't. I can, I can, I can make time. Actually, I don't have time. And then we have every reason why it's not a good time. And you know, one of the reasons I did do it when I did um, when she was eighteen months, I didn't want Avery to see me at eighteen years old when she's going away to college and say. Well, why didn't you run for office then? And why are you doing it now? And I say, well, because of you. 
Mm. I don't that want her to say that. That would that I want her to be proud of me and say I did this at 18 months and not when you're 18 years old because it is for your future mm-hmm. and I have to do it now. And I think she will be proud. And every decision I make about counsel and things that I want to do, it is about her. Will this make her proud? Will she be impacted for this? And mm-hmm. yes, I could do it at 18 years old when yeah. she's 18. I'm sorry, when she's 18, but I could do it at 18 months. Mm-hmm. And I'm robbing her of the things I could have done during that time if I wait. Yeah, you or don't want her to use think that, her. Yeah, yeah, that she was the crutch of you, yeah. you know, and now fulfilling creating, your passion or something, you know, like that. Yeah, and now it's creating even more moments, if you will, yeah. for her and, and thoughts. And yeah, maybe and she think, can run And in inspiring the other moms. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. And then externally, uh, I've seen how, especially in some of these bigger organizations, is an establishment system. And, and traditionally, um, while black women are the base of the Democratic Party, we are 95 or 6 percent likely to vote Democrats. We are the base. They cannot operate without us. They cannot get elected without us. But do you see us on the ballot? Do you see Not black often. women on the ballot? No. Um, because the way the system works is um, they tap people on the shoulders and they invest in them. Sometimes there are self-anointed men that say, hey, I'm going to do this, and they get behind them. Sometimes there are systems where we need to go find someone, and they go and find a straight white male, and they get behind them. That's not mm-hmm. happening for us at that same rate. Um, and I've seen it firsthand where they bring me candidates, and they're like, hey, does this be, he'll be good for a state center race in your area. And I'm like, okay, what's he done? What's he do? How come you can find a sister? How come you can find one black woman? Do you ask them now? Yes, and all what, the time. What are their response? We can't find any. We don't know where they are. Mm-hmm. We talked to one and she dropped out at the last second. I get that a lot. I've seen black women run for office, fill out the paperwork, get the signatures, and then pull their application back at the last minute. Because Several they're times. because they're afraid the time. Yeah, um, it's not a good time. I thought I could do it. You don't. We don't get the same support as they do. We sure don't. So you have to have it all in you first, and then people get behind you. Mm-hmm. We don't get the. I'll pick up your kids. I'll take them to school. I don't. We don't get all that. Men don't have that same. Have to worry about that at all. They, that's not a, a, a conversation for them in a way that it is a conversation for us. It is very much a conversation of when anyone asks me to do anything at 3.30, I'm like looking at them like, mm, maybe I can commit to that, but I know my kid's out of school. My husband's like, oh yeah, I could be there. And he'll probably text me later and say, hey, I'm going to be somewhere at 3.30, whereas <laughs> I'm like planning my life around that mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And that's just how we are. So it's partly us and then our, and it's external. They They cherry pick and hand pick um, who's going to be next and um, who gets the same support who write when that comes with big checks too who, who is not who's just a, like emotional support the, the, we're talking $25,000 checks so people can get in the office yeah. that comes a lot with establishment people who are available people have flexible schedules and things like that and that's one of the things we're always fighting against how do we get more representation in our own party mm-hmm. What do you think that like certain, you know, political action committees or people that are looking for candidates should do? I mean, how, how I mean, do they need to create their own training grounds, like training programs like you went to, but geared towards African American moms? Yeah, I, I mean, think um, um I need I think when you are um you're having a program which they have tons. I I mean I can you know, tons of them out there. Um, but when you look in the room, is there all straight white males? Are there any people of color? Are there any black women? And then when they say women of color, then somehow we have to be specific and say, are any black women in there? Because right. women of color is yeah, everybody. Everyone. Everybody. Yeah. Um, they they have to. You have to look at. You have to have a conscious organization that's saying this is not diverse. Is this our party? Um, is this the people who really vote for us? And and they have to be okay with that. And you got to challenge it. Like mm-hmm. I feel comfortable enough now to go to them and say so y'all had all these people to do a rally and it wasn't one sister that spoke Mm -hmm. but we are very much a part of the base so you couldn't find one black woman democrat that was a good speaker to you know just introduce another candidate so to to hype the people up i.e. a recent convention they had a couple months ago Mm-hmm. Oh, at the D- Democratic mm-hmm. Convention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's funny. They got wrote a post 
for the women's caucus and mm-hmm. I I went to the women's caucus. I didn't see any black women on mm-hmm. the stage. I saw you mm. posted that. Yeah. Do you know that they tore me up in the comments and like the women's caucus well, I don't know who she was. Maybe something wrong with her eyes. I'll never Ooh. forget that comment. Because we had a uh, woman of color on the stage. I was like, I went to the meeting. I didn't see it. And they go, oh, we introduced the candidates. So some of the candidates that were running for state rep were on the stage. And I was like, okay, well, introducing candidates is not the same as a speaker or the same when it has to the platform. Like, it's 100 people running for office. So yeah. they had them, like, kind of parade around. But now we didn't hear from one. So then I was like, I saw what I saw. <laughs> And then I posted what I said. What I said. <laughs> and I post pictures. And then other people came and was like, she's right, you know. And then they kept saying, well, we had Lupe come. And I was like, did I say we didn't have women of color? Or did I say we didn't have black women? Um, they like to lump us in the... That's yeah, right. and that, I was yeah. like, that's great. I'm glad she was there. And that is representation. However, um, I said we didn't have any black women on the stage. And I still stand by that. Okay. And even if you had two... That's still not good enough. So do better. <laughs> and if you would like some information about where to find black black female Democrats, I'm like, just talk to black female Democrats. <laughs> yeah. And just uh, stick your hand out. Thank you. Like we really don't vote in the other party. So <laughs> you're not looking. Um, but yeah, that's happened. And you know, and I'm and I'm with the party. I support the Texas Democrats. I'm down for them. That means I love you. That means I care enough about you to critique you. If I ain't care about you, I don't show up no more. Like these corporations, I go and work in places, and I go look at the website. And I'm like, it's 2018th year of our Lord and Savior. Y'all don't have one black <laughs> on the person board. on the board of directors. Mm, thank you. Pretty I don't want to work for you. Yeah. Mm. Period. I'm a millennial very much in that way. I'm not in. I'm trying to be the first. I'm over that. Oh, <laughs> I want to work and I just want to go home. But I'm not here to teach you about blackness and accept people of color and do all your, you know, or change about how do we talk to the next. No, like y'all obviously don't think it's important in 2018. And I'm not here to teach you. I don't want to work there. And it's as simple as that. And I wish these corporations heard that uh, <laughs> as, 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 as plain as that. Like, I'm not even trying to apply for for your jobs because you obviously don't think that's important now sometimes they operate in their own bubble it is just it is a vacuum Mm -hmm. where they just they they have no um, idea as they trickle down your hr your hierarchy of employment what the people are saying or you know yeah where they're coming from so yeah and i and you know it's uh yeah, I always struggle with that. Like, I worked in HR, so um, is that my job to bring them that? And then how many people have brought it before me and failed? Um, and do I feel comfortable enough in that company to share that with them? Some places I do, some places I don't. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, and it's a target on your back once you do. So you better be ready. When you highlight something like that, you, you, you better be at a superb place in your career because okay. you could easily be ousted or okay. highlighting yeah. something they don't want to work on anyway. Sure. Okay. Gotcha. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about like, so you ran for city council, you're a councilwoman now, and now you're in this zone of YouTube, I don't want to say superstar, social media, TV, social media social. superstardom in a way, if you will, political wise. Like, <laughs> up and, up and why, yeah, hashtag like, black women. What, yeah. where, why did you go into this route or what led you go, you know what, I'm going to put this on some YouTube. Where, uh, where? You know what, I wanted to do this YouTube series called Candy with Candace before I even ran for office. Um, that was, I felt like the, the world of social media is taking off and it is a new medium, right? It is, in all respects, it's respected like you know, TV, newspaper, traditional press, it's its getting there. Maybe not to everyone, but to our generation, it's just as important we get information from it. I did not feel that politics uh, was playing in the social media space well. Um, I was, you know, you're looking, remember that thing happened on the iPhone where all the eyes turned into U's and that yes. weird shape? There was a whole video on YouTube on how to change that. What? From, I'm lost. It was like they yeah, sent out the, an update and then the eyes turn into use and it was like this weird It messes thing. up, yeah. It's weird. But anyway, okay. there's a whole video on YouTube how to change it back. But there's not a video on YouTube how to register to vote. There wasn't a video on YouTube of how to make sure you're still registered or how to fill out a ballot. 
So why is our world so antiquated when it comes to politics? Why would we not have something as important as how to register on YouTube? But we got any mundane thing, how to do good eyeliners on YouTube, right? Everything's on there. I didn't see that. So I said, I'm going to start creating videos and short snippets of things that my friends always ask me about. And sometimes in politics, people get real snooty like, I can't believe you don't know the difference between March and uh, November, you know, primary and general. Like, so that makes people not ask questions, especially our generation. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you go in these spaces and I spend a lot of time with old Democrats. They are the base of the party establishment. They do this. So you come in and you're like, well, why do we have to vote in March? And then why do we have to vote in November? And I'm like, oh. uh, because <laughs> one is a primary, one is a general. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to create something where I'm getting the same questions from my friends because obviously they trust me. So we put it in a place where it's going to live mm -hmm. and I can say exactly how I would explain to my friends. I mean, put it in a video and then someone can refer to it later. So that's all it was. And then um, I wanted to interview candidates and make them human. Because I think we see a lot of elected officials and we don't think of them as like parents and, you know, mm -hmm. co-workers and things that the normal roles we see them as like, you know, cut and and they are rehearsed mm -hmm. and <laughs> polished where, you know, me as an elected official, I share a lot about how I would like to see my elected official. So I want to see my elected officials braiding. I braid my daughter's hair on YouTube mm -hmm. and I put a video up. Well, that's what I do on Sunday nights. She has a lot of hair. I'm not... Uh, always doing speeches yeah. or whatever passing policy sometimes I'm just braiding her hair like most black women do on Sunday nights so I wanted to share that and I wanted to humanize it so that's what this, the series is about um, so I interviewed Mark VC, he's a congressman he was the first mm -hmm. person and yeah. I appreciate mm -hmm. him that because I was just giving like I have this dream and this vision and I want you to sit on a video with me and we're going to drive in the car and go get barbecue and he's like okay mm. So he also has a big social media presence. He gets the importance of that. Um, mm -hmm. Then Beto came to town and I was like, hey, we're going to have a town hall. Can I like take you around my city beforehand and record it? And he's like, yeah. And this is back, you know, before anybody knew before who he was. was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have a video of that. And, um, and it, you know, I just want people to just feel like our elected officials and our politicians are people. And they're just like us. And they make decisions like us, and their kids go to school, and, you know, they cut people off in traffic, too, and they listen to rap music, <laughs> and they eat at, you know, Whataburger or yes, whatever. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's not a council meeting until Candace has Whataburger. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Whataburger. I mean, it's right next door to my uh, city hall, so I always go. <laughs> so, do you find that when you are interviewing people that you, are you purposely like interviewing younger elected officials versus older elected? I'm doing whoever it take me no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> I didn't e I emailed everybody and was like hey you want to be on there and then like only the young ones do it they really? reply back really? <laughs> yeah it's a it's a it's a a time and a place and they you know it's a generational difference like mm -hmm. we were talking about with Congressman VC um some of the women in Congress still wear pantyhose to <laughs> Uh, session and they were like that's the quorum so when you guys come in without penny holes we're like oh my gosh that's the way we've done things so it's a respect of I get it that's the way you've done things but if I had a job to this day that said you have to wear penny holes I legit would not work there anymore <laughs> I feel you I feel you so. I'm like penny holes <laughs> Because it's not just pantyhose. It's indicative of how you treat people. And it's probably, if they make you wear pantyhose, they probably make you call them boss and sir. They probably make you ask for permission to, you know, take your kid and leave early for school. It's a culture thing. Mm -hmm. Pantyhose isn't just pantyhose. You have to keep them in your place. Yeah. It's, it's very much a, it's not just pantyhose. It's. No, it's, we don't need to have a pantyhose burning You have to be now. in your seat at 8 o'clock. If you're not working from 8 to 5 in this seat, you're probably not working. That's what I hear when I hear pantyhose. Oh, no. Traditional gotcha. office culture, sit in your seat, wait to be, you know, your turn to be promoted. And hmm. There's hierarchy in the way that we talk. I don't, I don't want no parts of that. But uh, trust me, government is very much like that. <laughs> so what, what is... <laughs> like, now y'all sound salty. Um, <laughs> what what are some reasons that you think moms should be more involved in politics instead of just voting? Um, um, they your your issues are pushed by the people who are politics is a squeaky wheel. 
type mm-hmm. of thing. The things that are at top of the issues are at top of our minds as politicians are people who make the loudest noise. If moms are just putting their head down and making it and they're just going to do work every day, I don't have time to be involved. I don't have time. To, trust me. It's a whole other group of people that make you, that make their issues our issue. And that's your job. So if you have mom issues, like I posted something about child care. Mm-hmm. Child care mm-hmm. is ridiculous Yeah, um, for working moms. And I'm also trying to push a paid maternity leave policy in my city. You know how hard it is to try to find moms to support that policy, even though they would support it because they're too busy, like, doing mommy things. Like, they don't have time to come to council meetings and do that. But trust me, it's a whole group of constituents that want me to finish the trails in my community, in my backyard. And that's their number one thing. And they're going to keep on me because that's something that's important to them. And that's how politics works. So that's going to be at the top of my list because that's the top of their list. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't see moms um, banding together with the power that they have. Except like for writing? school board. It, like writing? Is, are you, is it something where moms should be writing to their council person? Is it something where they should be making appointments? Like what, what do you think is the best route or ways of... I think Getting that is, um, and without being offensive, that's a very female and mom way to ask how I should be engaged. Okay. Because yeah. men, let me tell you. They just go up in there. They call. They come to the meetings. They are writing. They do it the way that they need me to handle it. Like the way that they feel comfortable getting it to me mm-hmm. is the way I need to receive it. So whether I don't like a blast on my Facebook page, they'll come blast me. Women always ask for, how would you like for me to petition to you? Men say, guess what? I'm coming. And, and I'm bringing a hundred sign this. <laughs> Thank you. And it is about this. So I would tell women, um, yeah. <laughs> if you feel comfortable writing letters, do it. Um, uh, bring 10 friends to a council meeting. And at the end of every council meeting, there is a uh, the thing called public comments. Yes. Um, you can talk about anything in the world that you want. And we hear anything. And we can't say anything back. But at least we'll know that's an issue for you. You can always email. I can only (laughs) imagine how that may go on a hot topic pertaining to the city. Oh, yeah. You know, you have to know your constituent. Where I am right now, the the hot topic is taxes. Taxes is always a hot topic. Always. Yeah. And they're worrying about a tax hike. Mm -hmm. And so let me tell you, you talk about how moms don't come out, but there are are a whole other side of a population that will come out Mm -hmm. and will voice their disdain or support Mm -hmm. and if that is anything they may they may have worked 12 hours they for sure are gonna come yeah to this Mm -hmm. city council meeting and discuss how they don't want their taxes raised but we want a soccer field but that's a whole different (laughs) that's a hey (laughs) you know what uh city council people you have to balance because people always tell you what they don't want what they do want and then you're like are you willing to give up this Okay, do you want a new, you know, football stadium? Do you want this new library being built? Okay, well, those things come from taxes. So you tell me, but that's at least giving us input because we're doing our best job as elected officials to try to gauge what you guys want. If we don't hear from you, there is a group that's telling us what they do want and Mm -hmm. they might want trails and they want trails to be completed in all of the backyard. And you're like, my kid doesn't use trails. My kid goes to school in that corner and it's unsafe. And that school bus, there aren't any more options out there. It, it's whoever is the, the loudest. Mm. And if you realize that and keep that at the forefront, I got to make noise about my thing. Sure. I got to bring attention to my thing. And then if it's not, if, you, if you're like, I can't do it, just me. There are coalitions and groups that are on any single topic, any nonprofit that's an organizer. They get that. Go and partner with them and then have them bring it to council. I think that's also the thing, too, as mm-hmm. a mom. Or we're just so involved in our own life that we don't know where to begin to think about topics related to politics. Like we're just so we're ignorant of politics, right? Well, we're. I feel like people are ignorant of the fact that Candace just brought up about like the the paid family leave act. Right. That's not necessarily a corporate situation. It can be a um, a, a politics a law. You know, we can have cities write that into law that, hey, if your company is in this city, you have to, you are required to provide X, Y, and Z services. But I know that there are some, just some moms that don't even know that basic. That's what that, yeah, yeah exactly. You know what I'm exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'd say um, it, you, you don't have to know it all. We won't know it all. Um, but at least put it out there. And your elected officials know where to point you. Mm-hmm. Um, I would look for, 
elected officials, when they run for things, they are talking about whatever things that they say. Hey, I, I want uh, good schools. Okay, when it comes time to uh, school finance or budgets, that's the person you should talk to because they're going to be a champion for that. If I'm the parks person and I don't really, all I care about is trails. So when you come to me and you want to talk about school buses, that's not my thing. So pay attention to when they're campaigning. Mm-hmm. These things they said um, are usually, you know, issues for them. And then also go to their websites. Um, someone that's a champion um, for clean water, you know, that type of person. When you have an issue of cleanliness in your city, that's the person you should talk to. And if not, there are organizations that um, fight issues like that. Mm-hmm. Go to them and say, how can I approach my council person, Congress person, and then have them bring that up. If That's not, you know, if you don't know where to start. Sure. Um, that's their job. And then understand you pay taxes. This government is supposed to work for you. And a lot of times we make it work for us. And I'm just speaking of my council hat now. Yeah. So we make it in the way that it works for us. But until you make it our issue, it's not our issue. So bring us, bring us whatever it is. And if you pay taxes for it, you have a say so on. I don't care if you live there six months. And, you know, people tell me all the time, my council, some of my colleagues on the council, like I lived in DeSoto longer than you've been alive. And I was like, and here we are, both on the council. With the <laughs> and they let us know, you know, and that's the, the hunt to shut up or, the, you know. Yeah. So quiet mm-hmm. our voices about you shouldn't be as loud about something. I was like, hey, they asked for taxes a year after I got here. That means I got to vote. That means I have a say so. And you're going to hear from me. 30 years in or 10 years in or 10 months in, I have to pay taxes on it. I'm going to voice my opinion about it mm-hmm. and uh, be okay with that. Understand that that's the way it's supposed to work. And um, that's just a lot of times I tell people, like, go. This is your thing. Mm-hmm. This is your gut. If you don't want any new apartments in your city, then that's your prerogative. There are implications to not having apartments. But say that. But don't let's say it's happening to me and I can't do anything about it. You pay taxes in that city. You're going to leave if it's too many. Yeah. So That's true. Uh, earlier you talked about originally you actually were thinking about being a campaign manager mm-hmm. where so where why why the campaign manager thought process um i think it's just being a woman it was just you know you didn't want to be in the spotlight mm-hmm. okay. yeah yeah I, I can be the women say i can be behind the scenes i don't have to be the person <laughs> on the mic i don't i don't need to be the president of the group i can just be behind the scenes and work on different things that's a woman thing like i will work for you for to the bone, women work so hard. The hardest people working on any campaign are women, especially black women. Mm. We'll be behind the scenes, but you say, okay, it's your turn to have the mic. Your turn to put your name on the ballot. They're like, nope, 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 nope. And then there's a guy right there like, I'll do it every time. And then, wow. so that's all that was, is me not being comfortable in my space and feeling like I'm not ready. It's not a good time. I just got it, you know, just, I just had a baby and um, I needed to learn how to be. I need to look at council meetings for a year, and then I feel like I <laughs> right. Like that's what we do. Yeah. Being ha- hyper analytical about. Yeah. Yes, I don't know. We are. We are. I, I've talked to so many women before they file, and it's the same. If I could tell you, it's the same conversations. I'm not ready. I don't even know what you know. A uh, preemption is. You don't need no preemption. Get your name on the ballot. It's not People like it's an SAT test. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but women don't, they feel like, I don't I don't know enough. Yeah, yeah. I exactly. can't, it's not my time. Yeah. And then we talk ourselves out of it. Well, to add, mm. to kind of segue into that, my question, um, are black women getting the support and notoriety deserved at the local level? Why or why not? Um, At the local level. And, and we know that, that you travel, so you can definitely compare yeah. it to other cities that maybe you've gone because of your new role. And I, was, and I say also this, I mean, we, we saw um, the election of um, Boston and what's and Atlanta. One? Atlanta, thank you. That's mm-hmm. one. So I know that there's there's some support there. You know, I think more from the per, the younger generation um, trying to push the, these black women to the forefront. But... To me, that's a small percentage to the large amount of black women that are running for office. And I, to me, like, th- that's nice. It's gl- I'm glad to see that. Mm-hmm. But what is a way or what can we do mm-hmm. to 
make all black women successful. Yeah, you know, I would say her. support her once she's in office. Our uh, mistakes are magnified times 10. Mm-hmm. Um, we give forgiveness to men, even black women give forgiveness to men for messing up than we give for ourselves. So um, I would say support her. Once she gets in the office, a lot of times, trust me, everyone was helping. Hey, all the people that helped on the campaign, I appreciated every single person to help. That is great. You got me in the seat. And then after you get sworn in, they go away. That's when I need you the most. Mm. That's when I need you. I need you in my corner. That's when the, the, the people who know how to strategize and have been organizing and you come to, you know, change some stuff up. That's when I need you the most and you're not there. Support her while she's in office. Back her up when she's going to council. When she makes a hard vote against the group, trust me, there are other people who are counting that and using that against her for her next re-election. You got to have her back while she's in the seat the whole time. And when when something does happen, when she does mess us up, have her back first. Mm. Be at that uh, press conference first. Be around her supporting her first. Because trust me, they are there first to let her know that she messed up. Mm. Or we don't want you mm. here. Or you know what we met we had let, we let one person on one black person look how they did we'll mm-hmm. never let another black person on again so um, yeah I don't think we get the same we don't get the same leash um, definitely don't say in that same notoriety um, I think also a lot of black women are uh, comfortable running for school board and city council not comfortable but like I see them more than in the state rep and the state senate seats and things like that um, it's closest to the people it's very much emotional when um, when I see women run in general for school board it's usually because their kids in the school board I've seen plenty of men that run for school board kids ain't in the district don't mm-hmm. go to that school <laughs> they don't have kids <laughs> and they still run and, women and win and, yeah, yeah and, and win yeah. whereas women it's very much like my kid graduated from here they go in here it's, it's 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 very much a part of who they mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, as a local ex official, what I say, I don't get the same notoriety. Nope. <laughs> Being honest, I mm-mm. I mean, I've been. Um, I feel like I work really hard, right? I try to do hard for my city. I represent DeSoto. I represent Democrats, women, black. I don't feel like I get the same support. Um, and it's it's any any progress or any uh, notoriety that I did get trust me I had to like beg them to highlight it really? write about my stuff the same way you write about random guy that did mm-hmm. something or you know come and support this thing that I'm doing um, I don't get the same look I mean I've been in things where you know they said my name wrong or said my city wrong or didn't introduce me at all whereas I see if there's a young black guy equivalent to me um, like a young black guy ran for office and he just got in there. They give that guy so much love and support. Like, we want to see you do good, but I see you the next Barack. Well, I can't be the next Barack. Or be the next Candace. Yeah. So it's not the same love. <laughs> and uh, just being honest, and you got to be okay with that. Be okay with when they're mentoring um, your elected officials that are higher than you mentoring, they always find a young guy to go mentor. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I got elected. None of y'all. <laughs> My phone ain't ringing. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I'm in the seat, but I constantly see them. I'm like, mm-hmm. go and say, oh, this guy, he'll be good. This is me, and I'm, and I just, you know, I sit back and I'm like, wow, I wish I had that same, you know, support where someone picked me out of something. Like when people tell you that they've been handpicked, and they told me to run. No one told me to run. No one said that you'd be good. It was, it was very much. You know what? I think I can do this. If I mess it up, at least I try. True. Whereas I see people are picking men to mm-hmm. get ready to run for their seat. Or they're investing in. When they pick them, they're investing. They're making introductions. Yeah. They're yeah. saying, go talk to him. Go meet with her. She writes big checks. Go and do this for her. They don't do that. Um, I don't say for most of my female colleagues, we're kind of, uh, anything we get, we probably fought hard for it or had to ask or you know, someone picked it up like, oh my gosh, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the realest answer I've ever heard, boy. <laughs> Jeez. I'm serious. No, I... Because it can be defeating. It, it can, yeah. You which know, goes back, meant- which, which is cyclic to me, going back like, okay, well, why do I even need to put this? Why do I want to um, 
put myself under all of this burden, you know, or stress of being overlooked, um, being, you know what I mean? Being, being torn apart, especially like you said, as a black woman, why, why would I even consider even putting my paperwork in? I'm subjecting myself to all of this ridicule. Am I ready for that? Yeah, I, I get yeah. I get that, but it'll always be like that if we don't do it, y'all. Mm. We got to do it. No, I hear you. I'm just for, I'm just for, for Melissa. Melissa. She's talking to the, no, she talking I'm to the talking, peanut gallery in the I, back. That's all I'm saying. That's all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 we got to do it. Like it, it'll always be that way. And then once I'm in the seat, I I can tell you is it, it's uh, I won't ever claim anyone's victory 100. percent but when I see a sister on the ballot and we get mm-hmm. the list of people who file, I call every single sister or I email her. Or I say, hey, what you need? If I see a candidate, a um, couple guys ran in Grand Prairie. I seen some people up north. Hey, you got my number. Call me. Mm. This is what you need to be doing. Don't go over there and go on a whole bunch of meetings and spend all your money at chamber events. You need to go knock on doors. Do you have mm. data? If There's some candidates in Duncanville that ran. That's a sister city next to us. I called them was like, do you have data? They were like, no, I've been knocking on every door. That's the type of stuff that the party should invest in giving her. Because um, mm. uh, data is how you figure out who to target. Mm-hmm. Yep. So if I got it, you got it. So if I pay for it, you already got it. But they're not get- that's the inside stuff that's happening around us that doesn't happen for us. Mm-hmm. So if I got it, I'm going to give it to her. And then I, any sisters I see running and I see they out here and they struggling or... You know, hey, what's going on? She seemed cool. What's she about? Because, you know, you can't endorse everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be on just everybody just because they a black woman. Like, I, I know call, that's right. That's my filter. I'd be like, okay, what you what you about? Like, what you, who do you stand for? Have Our listeners to- are not seeing her head, but <laughs> I <know>. I've <laughs> been in numerous Urban League meetings. And yeah. I've, seen the, I've seen the head go. You've seen so the head yeah, I've, I've seen you do it. To the side, like, who? Yeah. Do you, you know, you want yeah. some all lives matter or you want some black lives? <laughs> no. Ooh. Ooh. And if, you know, and I go check them out and I be like, okay, is she trying? She out here, she put, she did a hard bar. She put her name on the ballot. We just got to get her through the finish line. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll tell other people about her. Hey, Texas Democrats. And I have, you know, a friend in the party uh, in Austin. I tell them this sister's running. Uh, this is Irving. You know, they don't handle black people in Irving. I need you to put your arms around and give her stuff. And then that's my job. So I don't, mm-hmm. I don't get on their case for not finding them. Mm-hmm. I'm here now. I'm going to tell them. If somebody okay. running in Mesquite. She's good. She needs the same support. And they be like, okay, Candace, we got you. We trust you, so we'll trust sure. that she's legit. Sure. That's my job. What do you what is it like one of your um that you maybe have come across like training ground for those that want to run? Mm-hmm. Um, like some good programs? Yeah. Or? Mm-hmm. And and speaking maybe more nationally or maybe like that you've just seen overall. Um uh, generally I tell people if you are thinking about running now, go and work on a campaign. So that's a good barometer if you're really meant for this. Mm-hmm. Like, there are always campaigns happening, especially during now, um, during midterms. But uh, people come out the woodwork and, like, they've never done anything for anybody else. <laughs> so, like, if I see people in Urban League, that's a good one. Like, that means they understand structure. They get, you know, mission. They understand voter registration, some core principles about the type of candidate they will be. Um, and then also that means they have a support system. If you came from Urban League, that's a network. That means we... Mm-hmm. When it's time for one of us to run, we all going, okay, who running? What are we doing? What's the city? Okay, we're down there and we got to support. Um, but also there, are, so the Texas Democratic Party has a program. Also in Dallas County, they have a program. Uh, being a precinct chair, I tell people that's a good one. So it's 795 precinct chairs in Dallas County. Wow. It is an elected position, but it's rarely challenged. So most of the time you just sign up and you'll get it. But it is the cheerleader black captain for um, the size of the precinct. The precinct could be a subdivision, smaller, a couple of areas. But that's a good introduction because you get, you'll start getting electoral politics. You'll start getting community. You'll start getting, oh, this is Sister Evans on the block. She tell at least 12 people who to vote for. You need to know Sister Evans. She controls the block. So that's the type of thing that precinct chair does. So I tell people, mm. get involved in small ways, be on board or commission. Mm-hmm. Planning zoning in these city is important. They decide the future of what the community is going to look like. So get on planning and zoning. Mm-hmm. If you don't like that, get on arts commission or do, you know, keep DeSoto, keep Dallas beautiful, whatever the city is. And mm-hmm. 
small introductions to the community. But once you peel back the layers, you'll say, oh, this is really not. Like, I, I'm not missing all these things. Mm-hmm. You know what you need. You mm-hmm. went to college. You figured that out. Mm-hmm. You probably figure out city council. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. How do you, what's your self-care like? Oh, yeah. that's probably horrible. Um, let's see. So I have, uh, my husband takes her on Saturday morning. So if I don't have meetings, I do have uh, some time to myself. And mm-hmm. I build that in. Um, this, so I started doing this while I travel. So I work for the Texas work. I work for Texas Working Families Party. So Working Families National Org. Um, we care about um, policies that support working families. So ability to organize, uh, pay sick leave, pay return leave, campaign finance forms, things that working people care about. So I am the, the organizer for that. Just been doing that a couple months. So what I'll do, I just came back from Brooklyn last night. I added on the day before my work day just mm-hmm. to enjoy the city. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I had to start doing that. If I go to Austin, I add on the day. Mm-hmm. Or I add my front end or the back end. So I can. Now, enjoying the city is not you going around campaigning for somebody, right? No, like you no, are no, no, no. you going to the spa, you doing this something. This is, right? I would never okay. be in Brooklyn or in New York any other time. So let me just go away. And I went to the movies by myself mm-hmm. while okay. I was there. And, you know, I just ate dinner and just not did mommy things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I can definitely do better at self care. I need to learn how to chill. Like, I have a problem, and it's one speed, and it's go. And if I'm on it, I'm on it, and it is full speed ahead, blast, go. Everything else is a distraction. And then I don't slow down. Mm -hmm. I don't take time to chill. Like, if I get a win for anything, oh, my friend got elected, boom. Mm-hmm. Who's next? Let's. I'm on to the next mm. thing. I don't oh, chill. Wow. I don't enjoy wins or uh, sit and gloat or you know feel like I did Celebrate something. I'm moment. like, okay. So what? What's the next? It's on to stack. Who's, the running, next who's one. running now? Let's yeah. stack. Let's stack it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I know that. I know that's my issue. Um, and then with the kid and the husband, like you're just yeah yeah okay. So he needs time she needs time let me put that on the calendar um scheduling time i still like to do my video so i schedule time for that so i definitely could do better i could be a better mom I was be like, a better do, you wife. Have, do you i was gonna say do you have <laughs> girlfriends that you just kind of talk oh, yeah. to us and chill i have you know you tackle. have your political people no that are i'm not, not talking no, about, we're not talking about that. them no, not, no, not no, that no. circle no, we're talking about your, your well, girls no, okay so they are your day I, ones i have my go. girls that understand politics so i can say words out loud that I wouldn't normally say about people (laughs) so we have that and then we do happy hours and we celebrate birthdays okay we had a pretty mean group me that's a say it like that I got a sister group me and then we like we need to see each other let's go hang out and then we'll go in somebody's house and just kind of you know Nice. Chill. Kiki it up. Yes. I love a good Kiki. We're so glad to have you with us today. Tell the the folks, listeners, where to find you and the hashtags, the the website. I mean, we'll have the links for for them in the show notes, but let them know. So I put everything on CandiceQ.com. That's my website. But YouTube is called Candid with Candice. And then also my Facebook page. And then... Uh, so I have a city council page that's official updates about stuff, but you know I post anything on there too. So that's Candace Quarles, and um, Instagram is Candace Q, Twitter is Candace Quarles, and just email me. Like I, I really um, enjoy hearing what kind of things I need to be doing, should be talking about on my videos, what topics that people are like. I don't get this thing. Um, I, I want constant feedback because I want it to be useful. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, anyway, in that. And then if you're thinking about politics or getting involved, like, let's talk. We need more people. We need more young folks. We need more moms. Maybe people of color to get in. And, and, and I can try, try to demystify it for you. That is not, trust me, you got everything you need right now. If you're willing to research enough to even call and figure out that I might be ready, you've probably done way more work than most people that are ready to run for wow. office. <laughs> I know. Wow. Yeah. yeah tr- no, trust me. Ouch. Especially when I'm talking to women, they're probably over-researched, over, you know, or at a point where, okay, you need to make an action. You've done enough mm-hmm. thinking. Mm-hmm. Let's time to move and put your feet on the ground. Hmm. 
Nice. Interesting. Well, also want to add mm-hmm. that the last day to vote is October 8th for that for the midterm November election. So I would definitely encourage our listeners mm-hmm. to check that out. Go on your uh, respected website and check out how to file and where to file. Mm-hmm. We need a definite change. So October um, 8th is the last day to get registered to, to vote. To get registered to vote. Yes. Right. So then early voting is going to start uh, October 22nd mm-hmm. to um, November second election day is november 6th so if you don't know um if you're registered or not there is a website dallascounty.org that can tell you if you're registered or not but uh please go and just look it up trust me they're doing voting purges of uh voting records meaning Mm. they're tossing people out because they might be double registered in two counties so don't get caught up okay go and check and see if you're still do um, other states have something of similar nature where you can just go and look up other states, yeah, they're. I'm sure they're national. Okay. Um, I, I can guess find just a link. Google search would be, you know, they have a national register. register. Yeah, am I registered to vote? vote? And it'll push state you state. back to the state's exactly. website um, to check and see your status. But okay. please just don't get caught up and try to get registered the week before. Mm-mm, that ain't how it work. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we need every vote. This one is an important election. It's mm-hmm. deciding the future of our country, and uh, yeah. you know, we need more than ever. And uh, just become a consistent voter. For sure. Be a voter. Yeah. Yes. Be, be engaged. For sure. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, thank you, Candace, thank you. for your transparency and your realness. Thank you. No, thank you guys for having me. Thank you for having this platform. We need spaces free of, you know, just let me talk and let, let women and moms say, it's stressful being a mom. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's all yeah. going on. Yeah. Oh my God. I cry a lot. So yeah, we need places <laughs> like this. So thank you guys. That's so funny because you was talking about, you know, Sunday being hair date or whatever. And so one of the reasons I was a little tad um was because I was braiding my oh, daughter's hair. It's Saturday Man. hair day. <laughs> oh, it's Saturday. Well Saturday weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But I was braiding I was braiding her hair. And I was like, oh what time is it? Oh my god. I, I went go. to Brooklyn this yeah. week. Like I said, I have realized, okay, on Sunday I have to braid her hair Monday night because I'm going to be gone for three days. And, you know, as a mom, I don't want my daughter's hair to be looking crazy. That's a reflection of me, not him. Remember that. So I braided her hair the night before, and she stayed up late. And I was like, fine, because it's peace for her and for him and also for me. Right. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. So we invite you to continue the conversation via Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. Hashtag Mahogany Mamology and hashtag Black Women Lead. If you like this or any of our episodes, please be sure to rate and review us on Facebook or iTunes. Don't forget to check out our show notes for resources, Candace's complete bio, and where to find her, links to nominate a mammologist, our sponsor for this episode, as well as possibly just adding where to vote, registering to vote, okay? DFW Private Education is our uh, sponsor and our brand partner, Yara Imani. Until next time, I'm Tosh.